Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Wise Decision Maker Show, where we help you make the wisest and most profitable decisions. My name, as always, is Dr. Gleb Saborski. I'm the CEO of Disaster Avoidance Experts, the future of work consultancy that sponsors the Wise Decision Maker Show. And today with me is Nilesh Tucker, who is the who is in a leadership position in Zinov, the chief product officer, I believe, and he will tell us a little bit about, about what Zinov does. So please go ahead, Nilesh. Uh, thanks, Glad for having me on. I'm looking forward to our discussion today. Uh, so Zinov is in a management consulting company. We help companies think about global strategy, uh, market research. We also help companies think about global talent and how do you leverage global talent effectively. Mm -hmm. We do a lot of research on what are the various hotspots, talent hotspots across the world, and how those company can hire talent across the globe to help them grow and increase their growth and profits. So, so well, thank you, Tyler. And uh, tell us a little bit about the appropriate strategy to offboard remote workers and how companies have been getting it wrong recently. Sure. So, you know, the offboarding. People are very excited when employees join them, but they seem to not take the offboarding as seriously as they do onboarding. And uh, mm -hmm. particularly in a remote environment, it's much harder. Uh, and But we believe that it's a very important aspect of a employee's life cycle with the company. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they have contributed uh, to the company uh, and they want to leave with an, a sense of accomplishment that they have, you know, they have contributed to the company. And the way to do that is make sure that you have a, a clear, <clears throat> you have a plan, a, a planned approach to it. Uh, mm -hmm. There is a support to it and there's a transition. So you want to, and what I mean by that is that make sure that it's clearly documented how you want to do this process, particularly when you're doing uh, layoffs, where there are a lot of, uh, you know, you, a lot of people being impacted at the same time. If there's no plan, it can go mm -hmm. know, pretty haywire. So, Make sure the employees are feeling respected and supported during this process. <clears throat> and then there's obviously an important aspect for the company's benefit is the transition. You want to make sure that there's a clear uh, there's a clear plan to transition all the work and the knowledge that the customer has uh, into this. So, hmm. yeah. so what is the difference between specifically remote workers and in-person workers? What are the particular challenges associated with layoffs with remote workers? Yeah, so typically uh, a remote worker, you know, you don't see them. It's, uh, they don't, uh, it's, so it's, it's easy to forget all the processes you may want to do. Uh, but, you know, one of the important part of, uh, again, an important part of uh, offboarding is an exit interview. When a person is leaving, uh, they are much more likely to give you the true feedback. And so mm -hmm. you want to make sure uh, that you get that uh, it's harder to do that when it's a person is remote. Uh, they also don't. Uh, there's also not as many relationships when you have a remote worker. So it's even more important that you're taking care of that. Uh, you know, when your person is when a local person leaves, you could take them out for lunch or you know you give them a farewell party. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas uh, remote, it is harder to, and so it's easy to forget. Uh, but mm -hmm. it's very important that companies have a a clear a farewell uh, event for the same employee. Uh, make sure mm -hmm. that all the, the equipment and the knowledge which you uh, which you may need to collect from the uh, employee is taken care of properly. All of those sometimes tend to be forgotten. So, hmm. And so let's talk a little bit about some best practices. What are, what would be a framework that companies can use to specifically make sure that none of those issues that you've raised are actually forgotten? Yeah, as I said, I, I would say there are uh, three main parts to this. Uh, planning, make sure that it's clearly documented. There are, it's them, mm -hmm. There's a checklist of things which you may want to take care of. Uh, you are being supportive of the employee, respectful and supportive of the employee. And so what are all, can, how can you support them? Is Suppose if it's a layoff, uh, do you support them through financially, through support about interview, uh, into resume research, you also mm -hmm. want to make sure that, uh, you know, you, if you have any references, you're willing to give them those references. Uh, mm -hmm. So those are the support and the respect part of it. And then the transition, making sure that all the, whatever equipment and necessary access controls you need to take care of, all the transition knowledge, which you need to make sure that that is happening properly. 
and you can use there are various tools available which you can use to make sure that those are happy with that. So. Okay, tell me a little bit about the tools that you're talking about. Yeah, I mean, mainly, you know, there are a lot of uh, software tools available, but also checklists and uh, access mm -hmm. control tools available. So we're making it easy for, uh, you know, when an employee leaves an automated, a lot of automated, with AI, you could also say what kind of transition work you may want each employee, what knowledge they may have, and how mm -hmm. you want to make sure that what kind of transition work you take care of. So uh, checklists, templates, you know, planning, uh, there are, as I said, there are offboarding tools, specifically tools available, which can you can use to make sure that it's happening well. So, well, in the current economic situation, there are a number of tech companies that are laying off a number of people at once. How should this kind of situation be handled versus one off offboarding, where you figure out someone's not a good fit, and you say, well, this person may not be a good fit, and we'll want to part ways with this person, versus you know, 100 people at once, 1,000 people at once. What is the difference there? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, just uh, as you know, there are more than 300,000 tech employees have been impacted over the last year alone. So, mm -hmm. and uh, and when you're, when you're doing one-off, it's easy to do everything I mentioned earlier. But when yeah. you are, uh, when you're doing layoffs in, in big numbers, uh, it's then you tend to not be able to take all the, steps properly but one mm -hmm. of the things you it's very important is make sure that there is a clear communication plan that all the employees are properly informed uh there is an exit interview which is pretty pretty important which will help mm -hmm. you help you improve uh the, the future processes which you learn from mm -hmm. this exit interviews but also <clears throat> uh uh you know when you have hundreds of people uh, impacted by this. Uh, mm -hmm. It also is impacting the current employees who are going to be left behind. And mm -hmm. so if they sure. see that it was not done well, you know, you've seen some examples recently when things were not handled properly, uh, it impacts their morale of the company. So these are people who are going to stay behind. You want to make sure that they feel that the people who are impacted, these are colleagues they have been working for years, mm. they're properly respected, properly taken care of, because that's going to help them be even more loyal to the company. So so it's important that it's not only you think about the people are impacted, but also people who are going to be left behind. Are they communicated properly? Do they mm -hmm. understand why this is being done? So all of those are important parts of this operating process. Now, I want to ask about cultural differences. So we're chatting before the show that right now you're in India and mm -hmm. right now I'm in the US. What are the differences between offboarding practices in different cultural contexts? And what do leaders of global companies have to be aware of as they're engaging in thinking about layoffs? Yeah. Uh, every country has its own, obviously, rules and regulations about this process. So obviously, you want to be aware of those things. But also, um, you know, Culturally, like in India, layoffs not as common as you know. Sometimes people are not used to this, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's very rare. So it's even more important that you are people are understand what is being happening. The communication is done well, um, particularly in, a, in as I said, in India, layoffs are not very common. So what can you do so the people understand that this is nothing? Hey, this is a business decision, nothing personally against the employees or anything uh, of that sort. Uh, you in the U.S. we hear this news common, so people may be used to it. So make sure that people are clearly understanding the process. There's a communication plan, uh, and it's also clear that it's being fair. It's not being discriminated against any particular country or area. Mm -hmm. And this is being done based on the business decisions which you are with uh, requirements which are needed to be done. So mm -hmm. now, remote workers are when you look at surveys overall more worried about layoffs than workers who are working in a hybrid modality or fully in-person modality. To what extent is this concern reflective of reality? Uh, say that again, maybe. To what extent are remote workers more frequently laid off than let's say hybrid workers or comparable fully in-person workers? Yeah, I, I don't think there's any stats which says remote workers. One thing that I do know that 85% uh, of the remote workers feel that the offboarding process is not satisfactory. So 
Mm. So there is a lot of people who are remote. They don't feel that uh, the, the remote the process was as good as it could have been. Mm. So that's something clearly the company has not been. They still we are still all of us are still learning through this. Right, obviously hybrid and all that is a the new concept. Uh, mm. at least at the at the level at the scale at which it is happening right now. So people companies mm. are still learning. Also tech workers. And un, until now, tech has not seen as many layoffs as before. Sure. So there's also a new phenomenon for the tech industry. And so mm -hmm. that is also something we are learning process for the company. And so I believe that that's going to take a little bit of time. But there are companies which have handled it well and companies which have not handled it well. And hopefully, mm -hmm. as, as, we, as we all learn, it'll get better. So make sure that you plan offboarding remotely as well as you do for an in-person employee. Okay, well, I think this is a good note to wrap up on. Are there any last words that you wish to share? Any advice about offboarding that you haven't shared yet? Yeah, so I would say make sure that offboarding is clearly planned. There's documented <laughs> uh, a planning both from an actual process and also a communication plan. Uh, there's a plan for transition and there's a clearly plan to support the employee and, and make sure the employee feels respected. Uh, and that is also important for your people who are going to be remaining with the company, that they feel that their colleagues are supported uh, because that's going to be an important part for your retention strategy. So offboarding should be taken. As, as, and also one of the, the most interest, interesting aspects of this is as employees, when they're leaving, as I said earlier, are likely to give mm -hmm. you uh, a lot more candid feedback, which can be mm -hmm. very important for the company to make sure that either how to make sure that the process is improved, but also what other things can be improved in the company to uh, to make it even a better place to work, so. Hmm. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, Nailish. That was very helpful. Thanks, Lev. Really appreciate your time and looking forward to our discussion in the future again. So. Thank you. And thank you to the audience for checking out another episode of the Wise Decision Makers Show. Please make sure to subscribe to the show wherever you check this out and leave a review. It helps other people discover the show and it helps us improve the show. All right, everyone. I look forward to seeing you on the next episode of the Wise Decision Makers Show. In the meantime, the wisest and most profitable decisions to you, my friends. Thank you, Bill. Take care. You too.